neighbors. neighbors. Welcome to the Fence Bar. I'm Neighbor Sharif. I'm Neighbor Sean. Hey, that's, neighbors. That's Neighbor Mike. And we're coming to you live on Almost Tape from the beautiful Lower Hudson Valley in Westchester, New York. Dude, this is episode 10. We finally made it we to made double it to digits. Double digits. I feel good about I it. I didn't think we were ever going to make it to double digits, man. Oh, man. Nobody did, really. No. But, but we did, and now it's the longest day of the year. It is. It's a we summer solstice. Drink to that, too. Yeah, yeah drink to that. summer solstice. Wait, I don't have anything in my glass. You what better are you guys fill drinking? She's oh, well, right now I'm drinking a little barrier. Uh, a little barrier IPA for your sidecar get there, it, Mike. Get it. This episode is going to be a little different than our usual episode. This episode it's gonna be good. is going to be a little... <laughs> you hear what I said? <laughs> this episode is going to recap uh, the last 10 episodes. And really, we couldn't have made it to 10 without all the awesome neighbors and all the contributions from everybody, including our 10 guests. Mike, who have our 10 yeah. guests been? All right, hold on. He's got to unwrap. And he's been studying uh, this list. Uh, um, all right. Is that your is that okay. the, the beer receipt or? Hold on, I can put my glasses on. Okay. Right. <laughs> all right. Oh, episode number one. Sharif and Sean. Hey! Oh, that was us. That was us. It was our first ever Howdy Neighbor Meet Us this, episode. This is the Bohemian Neighbor. Me. And I'm the uh, Bush Cutter Neighbor. <laughs> so check out episode one if you want to know why he's Bohemian and, and why, why he's I'm a the Bush, bush cutter. cutter. Or the bushwhacker. Bushwhacker, yeah. whacking bushes. Ah, episode two. Oh, it was me. Yeah, Neighbor Mike. Uh, he I builds stuff. Been... Neighbor Mike from Three Industries build things builds too. things stuff. and builds stuff. Stuff and things. I should have been episode three, but episode three. Intoxicating. Ah, Intoxicating was our first intoxicate. real guest. Yeah. And it's not Intoxicating. Not Intoxicating. It's Intoxicate. Sorry, Intoxicate. Find her on Instagram if you want to know about all the top food places in Westchester. It's Intoxicate with a K. K. Oh, wait. Yeah. What? Yeah. Is that Matt, Matt Campbell? No, Campbell. it's uh, Sambil. Nope. Sambil. Matt Sambil. Uh, is he here? Uh, yeah, Matt, Matt, Matt Campbell, Campbell has been one of our best uh, neighbors. Is there Matt, Matt Campbell uh, here? Can we give it up to Matt Campbell here? Campbell Meets? Uh, Campbell. He, he had to go, but... Campbell. Campbell Meets and Matt Campbell, uh, they are our meat sponsor. And every Thursday morning, we get the Thursday morning meat delivery uh, from Matt. Thursday morning meat. It's so sweet. Every time. It's amazing. <laughs> get out to Dobbs Ferrari and make sure you see Matt Campbell at Campbell Meats Butcher Shop. Get that lard on, Be baby. King of meat. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Where's it going to go with that? <laughs> Joe oh, Turco. Speaking of the meat. Joe Turco, speaking of the meat. Speaking of the meat. The, the Chico and Son Millwood crew was yeah, here. Yeah, Chris the Chico. And, Julia uh, Sexton was here for the meat. that. The meat. Yep, absolutely. Uh, who else? There was a lot of people on that know. one. It was, our, was, it was our Pliny party where we had Russian River uh, sent over. to us by our really good friends. Mike Benz almost was almost on tonight. Yep, but, so thank you, Mike Benz. Thank you, Russian River. Hey, episode thank you, 20, Meets. Mike Benz. He's going to be episode here. Episode 20. Episode 20. 20, come on. Who was uh, our sixth neighbor? Oh. Justin Montgomery. Justin ah. Montgomery. Harper's. Where I need to go to Harper's and Dobbs Ferry. Harper's and Dobbs Ferry yeah. has probably some of the best craft beer you can have if you're at a restaurant and eating fine food. And it's, some of the best tables. And some of the best tables. Mikey tables. Uh, yes, but I heard they're also going to be eventually in the future serving... Sing Sing Kill, maybe? I don't know. Oh. We make that happen? Let's do yeah. it. Yeah, we should make that Sweet. happen. Who's our episode happen. seven neighbor? Oh, Shauna. I thought Shauna was going to be here. Shauna! Shauna! Shauna, Shauna, Shauna where are you? You're it's always here. here. Yeah, that was a great episode, by the way. Yeah. Check it. That was one of our best episodes. Uh, speaking of one of our best episodes, how about episode number eight? With uh, Brendan and Doug. Brendan oh, and Doug! Noggin. Beer Noggin! We've got one half of the Beer Noggin crew here. How is That's it, Doug? Right. How are we going, Cheers. Doug? Oh, he's coming in. Oh, he's coming, he's in. coming in. in. He's coming in hot. He's coming in hot. Where's your pot dog? Himself. Where's the pot? A new, a new batch of pot dogs being made. Get it. Very shortly. Awesome. Check it in. Going out to distro again. Beer we Noggin. Were, we we want just at Beer Noggin. Oh, yeah. It'll be here. Okay. We were at the Noggin, and some guy came in and was like, Haha, I just bought... Six cases or three cases of Pognog, so there's no more in the case. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, we beat his ass and sent him, yeah, yeah, yeah. him on the train. Beer the Noggin Bronx. is oh, yeah. in Beer Noggin's in Bronxville. It's right across the street from the Bronxville train station. Uh, what car Cheers. do you have to be on to just walk out and go straight into Beer Noggin? Oh, uh, if you're coming out of uh, coming, Grand Central, it's yeah. 
It's uh, towards the back. Towards it's, the back. It's one of the. It's like the second to last car. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Good to see you, Doug. All right. Thanks, Doug. Episode number nine. Oh wait, who's behind the camera? Is that Matt? Is that Matt? 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 Oh wait, is that today? That's today. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Who's coming? Yeah, Who's wow. here today? I don't uh, know. I think it's Chef Andreas. Andreas from Chef Captain Andres. Lawrence. Chef Andreas. Oh, he's what? still cooking he's with still the bon. He's still making the duck bon oh, me. That's amazing. Chef Andreas is an amazing chef who's introduced uh, Thai street food to Captain Lawrence. So now you can go to Captain Lawrence, go to have a delicious beer. It's like you're in Southeast Asia. And have amazing Asian street food. Don't don't mess the mess around. Get them wings too. Absolutely, gotta get noodles. them wings. The and those. Those have been our 10 uh, guests. Uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention uh, Hogboy and Sam Schmidt, uh, uh, who are our local farmers. Local farm extraordinaire. They've been amazing contributors to Fence Bar. We got uh, Doug from Toolnut who's wait, helped us up Doug with the beer report. Toolnut. Doug from Toolnut's Doug here. From Toolnut. the, Yo, he's got the he's got the board from. Uh, come on in, guys. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in, Sam. It's a family affair. Yeah. Hey, guys. Yo, it's also. Go it Skate Day, it International Go Skate they Day can't today. They can't see Sorry, they're not watching. Go Skate. Light is blind. Yeah, right. It's yeah, International yeah, yeah. Go Skate Day. That's why <laughs> Steven didn't show up today. And uh, the two most important members of all of Fence Bar are our two wives, Fizz and Kiana. Oh, Thank you so much, you Fizz and Kiana. Kiana. Wow. None of this would be possible without you guys. And her, it's, come it's, it's, in, come in, neighbor Amy. And neighbor Amy, of course. Oh, come in, too. Come yeah. on. Yeah. You gotta get some FaceTime here. So we've yeah. done it. Yeah, we've I've made it. We're doing. We're in double digits, and we look forward to tickets Ten for the next episodes. level. Ten so, episodes. Whoa, yeah. that's big. So thank you to all, all the right. neighbors who have supported us, Yay! both here and on camera. We love you, Shana! and we appreciate you. Yeah, there's Shauna. She's in there, too. And we're like looking that. forward like to a hundred more episodes. Or at least two. Ooh. Phil's yeah. hair will be a lot longer by then. Yeah. <laughs> all right. This is awesome, man. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for making Fence Bar what it is. Yay! Thanks, guys. All right. Awesome. All right. Woo! All right. All right. Up, High guys. ten. High ten. Double. <laughs> Uh, what time is it, Sean? Beer Brains! Beer Brains! Beer Brains! Beer brains. Beer brains. You know, every uh, episode of Beer Brains, I normally talk about a different style of beer, maybe a process of brewing beer, the yeasts, uh, stuff like that. Today, it's really simple. We're going to be talking about craft beer and also the virtues of getting a deal. Go to your beer store, and if you see a variety pack on sale, get it. Is that the fence bar tip That's of the, the day? That's the fence bar tip of the day. Long trail on sale. 12 pack Solid. Chico's Mill with 12.99, three different IPAs. Amazing, dude. So yeah. beer brains, beer brains started off very simple. It all, it all started with two kinds of beer. Every kind of beer is either an ale or a lager. An ale is fermented from the top. A lager is fermented from the bottom. And then they do what? They, go, they yep. fart out CO2 and alcohol. All the yeast does its magic, man. But we got a little ahead of ourselves, and I want to bring it back a little and talk about what craft beer actually yeah. is. That's a great question. What defines craft beer, and how do you know what you're drinking is craft beer? Wait, what is craft beer? Can I have a taste of the oh, craft yeah. beer? Oh, you should. You, you should pick a sidecar. Can you pill, yeah. uh, pick a sidecar for pick us? pick one? Yeah. yeah. Any, anything. The <laughs> world is your oyster. <laughs> cool. So what is craft, Sean? So craft is a uh, it's a small brewery. Mm -hmm. It is a, going to be an independent brewery, and it's going to be a traditional brewery. What does that all mean? It all comes down to numbers. The way that we look at anything in business is how much is the volume. So, if you are a craft brewery, you make less than 6 million barrels of beer a year, and that's the, that's the small size. The independent size is you are owned by yourself. You own at least 75% of your brewery, and then not that means no other brewery can open uh, own more than that. Yep. And in traditional, you're going to be making uh, traditional styles of beer. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be using, uh, you're not making Mike's Hard Lemonade. Right. You're not a craft brewery if you're, if you're playing around with the, those types of things. So you're using traditional ingredients, which are the four ingredients. So it comes down to production volume yep. and ownership stake. If you've got 76% ownership from uh, uh, an outside party, you're no longer a craft bre uh, brewery. 26% you're no longer a craft brewery. Oh, you're right. Sorry. Yep. 26% yeah. you're no longer a craft brewery. 
And also, if you're producing more than six million barrels, six million barrels—that's a lot of barrels. That's a lot man. of barrels. Yep. But but then you also have to think about why do we measure it in that? It's all about taxation, and that's all the regulations, and that's why we yep. come up with those numbers. Now, is there any? Uh, does the, do the ingredients um, have anything to do with that designation? It you know, does it matter if it's organic or if it's locally sourced? Does that have anything to do with craft? You know, it, it inherently yes, because it fits the the, the third part, the traditional. Yep. You're, you're using traditional ingredients and and brewers like artists that they are want to use locally produced things as much as possible yep so mm -hmm. yes it, it is about where you're going to source things and making sure that you're getting the best ingredients possible to make the best beer possible yep um and and it doesn't necessarily have to be the ingredients have no part in the craft distinction it literally okay. comes down to ownership stake and volume produced yes and, it, and other than you can't have like a malted liquor being a craft brewery yep. and and a term we hear all the time is nano brewery micro brewery macro brewery what's the difference between micro and macro so microbrewery fits the, the largest part of craft brewery. Like almost every craft brewery is started off as a microbrewery. Once you achieve X amount of barrels, then you, you proceed through those ranks until you hit the big bad voodoo daddy of them all, six million and one barrels, and now you're a macro brewery. Yep. That's Anheuser-Busch, that's Miller Coors, well, that's in yep. and, and at that point, um, you are classified in a whole different realm. And one of the coolest things about craft beer, and it's constantly changing because you could start off as a craft uh, a, a craft brewery, yeah. But you know, tomorrow you might maybe somebody sell buys twenty six percent. Maybe you're a uh, founders and you sell a little bit to San Miguel in uh, Spain. So and... what are what are a couple examples of uh, uh, breweries that we consider craft that uh, uh, are no longer craft because they've been either sold out? What are a few examples of that? Well, I want to I want to do a little asterisk on this because yep. I'm not saying you shouldn't drink these beers. They are not craft breweries. A lot of them are still making all of their production. They're in control of it. Their employees are all employed by that company. However, they're owned by a large one. Yep. So that being said, Lagunitas is owned by Heineken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Ballast Point is by Constellation Brands. Yep. Blue Point was recently sold. AB InBev. Yep. 100% of a, a Blue Point is no longer craft. Yep. Uh, and is there a way to be able to distinguish between craft uh, and non craft? Now, on some of these bottles, you will see an independent, or there's a, gosh, I should have probably checked this beforehand. But yeah, there's a thing that the Brewers Association has put out. Um, that allows you to put a label that shows that you are an independent brewer. Um, one example of it. Here. Uh, but, but, so <laughs> These must not be. It's crap. new. No, just kidding. It's all new, and this is another this is crap. It's all Miller Code. And it's... one of the cool things you mentioned is uh, <laughs> by going macro uh, or getting out of that craft designation, you're not necessarily lowering your quality. Sometimes no. it's actually getting better. Because... Sometimes you're getting access to better hop harvests yep. uh, because they own uh, the macro breweries already have those long term relationships. Uh, they are going to have a whole bunch of more technology and science uh, available for you. Yep. That's awesome. Well, I guess uh, the lesson of today is if you want to drink good craft beer, check your label. Yep. Make sure it's got that independent mark on it. If it doesn't, you know, Google helps you. Yeah. You know, you're only a Google away from finding out. And if you think that a brewery might be owned by somebody else, it probably is. Yep. Mike, anything to add? Uh, I don't know. Our sidecar from mm. Hudson Valley. Oh, yeah. I want to add that. And oh, this is from neighbor Doug. Delicious. Doug from Tool Nut in Thank you, Mayo Doug. Peck. Right? Am I right, Look Mayo Peck? Oh, that's some red juiciness right there. What is this? Can you tell us about this beer, Mikey? I can't tell you anything about this beer. <laughs> besides the fact that it's Hudson Valley. Is that hibiscus? Valley. It's fantastic. Definitely Cheers. Not. Cheers, guys. <laughs> well, hey, like. thanks for uh, tuning into the Beer Brains. That was Beer Brains. Tune in next week for more. Beer Brains! Beer Brains! Beer Brains! Beer Brains! Howdy, neighbors! Welcome to the Fence Bar. We are now at our favorite segment that is Meet Your Neighbor. Meet the Neighbors. And today we've got Hello. Chef Andreas Ooh. from Captain Lawrence. Now, Chef Andreas has introduced an amazing new thing to Captain Lawrence, and it's Asian street food. Um, and we've gone in there. In Elmsford. In Elmsford. It's some of the best Asian street food you can get in Westchester. If you haven't been there, we strongly encourage you to go. But we've got Chef here today helping us make duck banh mi. Welcome, Chef. How are you? Uh, How are you doing? Good to see you. Nice to Thank see you Thank you too, so guys. much for coming. Now, you oh, live yeah. and work in Westchester. How long have you lived and worked in Westchester? Uh, like for a year. About a year. One I, year. One year. Yes, yeah. one year. Okay. Yes, last summer I bought the house and like 
did a little renovation and moved to Groton and Hudson. Oh, you're, you're in Groton? Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Oh. Right here. So what was the inspiration uh, for uh, going with the route of Asian street food at Captain Lawrence Brewery, which for us kind of seems like an unorthodox choice? Yeah, you know, I like to take risks. I like to be like bold and try new things. Uh, shake a little bit like things around I, like I it. see Moving yeah it. right yeah so push it, baby. what i see was uh, a boy over here in like in westchester yeah like totally. it's a lot of good food but like everyone is trying to do the same yeah i saw that i believe like capital lawrence per se on with the food does kind of like with the beer sorry does kind of like the same thing yeah they push a little boundaries in terms of flavors. They push a little bit like of oh, what yeah. to do. And I kind of like see that opportunity where we can do something and put ourselves, you do, know, do in the, a different in the a food different. mix that what they're doing with the beer. Oh yeah, like yeah. The food, pushing those the boundaries. Food. Listen, it's like a lot of umami, salty, spicy flavors. Fish it's sauce. Perfect, it's perfect Ooh. drinking food. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's great. Spicy. Like street, yeah, right. Thai and Vietnamese food is Come on. the perfect, perfect for drinking food. It's fantastic, and and we've had everything on the menu. Everything on the menu is fantastic. So congratulations for yeah. taking Appreciate such a risk and being successful. We love Thank the wings too. Yeah. We uh, we I mean that's not the only thing we love. I love a lot of things. The noodles, the spicy sausage noodles are amazing. Amazing. Yeah. But the, but the wings, you gotta get them. It's all about the nudes. People. People, go get some news. Um, anyway, we always have three questions for our guest. There it is. The first question is, what kind of beer do you have in your refrigerator right now? Not what kind of beer you wish mm. you had. What's in your refrigerator right now that's delicious drinking beer? Grapefruit IPA, uh, effortless IPA. Effortless from, IPA from Captain, Captain Lawrence. Lawrence. Of course, I get it right? For free, bro. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I guess if you have anything besides Captain Lawrence, you might be in trouble, right? Yeah. Man. So, right. how much uh, effortless IPA did you bring the fence bar? Oh, he, 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 he brought <laughs> what kind of what? He, he brought the other oh, good man. stuff, man. All right, he, he he's yeah, assembling yeah. some smoked duck that we got from a local farmer. I get it. Yeah, I so get it. A, but I want got beer. a fridge full of Captain Lawrence. Yeah. Question number two, Sean. Uh, question number two. You're throwing a party, right? Like you're in Croton. You got all your new fence bar friends. We're coming over, man. We're gonna oh, have yeah. a great time. What are you gonna serve us? What uh? What's your what's your thought process? Do you have a strategy when you pick your beer? For are you a gonna party? buy a lot of different styles of beer? Are you gonna stick with one? No, I keep like a good selection, so like people have like different profiles of beer. Like you know, like some people like their stout, some people like their IPAs, their New England IPAs. Uh, some people just like to drink like a berry. Like a dead Basic. light, a dead yeah, light. you know, no fuss, no light beer drinking. that they can bring, like drink, like six, eight of them. Yeah, and just yeah. have to and pee a lot. You have to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's perfect. Just to perch, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just to hang out. <laughs> and I, I like that party. Yeah, I, I want to go to that party because yeah. I will be You're there. Invited. I'll be drinking them all. Nice. Yeah. Hey, um, so, it. question number three: uh, Thinking back on all of your experiences with beer. What's your best memory with beer? What's something that stands out in mm. your mind as like uh, an awesome experience or a great memory? What is that definitive moment in your life that is beer? I think beer was the first thing as a young man I was like drinking. And it's a lot of good memories. I believe like <laughs> beer, I see it as food. It's like a bond. It's something that you create like, you know, like connections around yeah, you know? yeah, yeah sure. like yeah. something like you sit down and like can have a serious conversation or just hang out and like meet your best body you for the neighbors. rest of your life yeah. exactly yeah, yeah man exactly so it's the same as food like just it's like an icebreaker natural icebreaker it's yeah. something like just go and like boop what was your what was your best icebreaker uh, related with beer? Is there a story about a sexy girl on the Come beach on. in Venezuela? I have so many, bro. Oh, <laughs> good story. Uh, I, I will be here. Hot I will night. be here. I will be here for like <laughs> ten days. Just telling stories. Hey, we got a hammock. Yeah. Uh, we got well, we can get this. Let's hammock. move all the cameras. <laughs> that, that is my favorite. That That's amazing. Is my I need yeah. someone to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so you you've only been in Westchester for one year, but um, if you had to give a tip to someone who's not from Westchester, or for someone who's coming to visit Westchester for a day, what's your tip for someone who um, is not familiar with Westchester? Go to the Croton River 
that thing is amazing. The Croton River. Go to the Croton River. If you have the chance to take a kayak off the river, kayak. that Croton thing river. feels just like you are like in the North Atlantic. That's it. I'm and loving it. Like this, this, the whole like county is like, like people talk about New York City. I lived so many years over there. Yeah, Brooklyn is hip. Yes, the food is amazing. I will not change one dime for it's like all about Westchester, you got it right Westchester now. You hear it from right. me. That's you heard it, it from <laughs> Chef Andre. No Gowanus. No Gowanus. No 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 yeah, that's it. We don't give a yeah, damn. You Croton see like people yeah. like you seriously in Brooklyn. You see people like talking like, oh yeah, I want kayak in the Gowanus. Can I? I'm like, what? You don't know. And how many arms do you have now? Yeah, right. <laughs> what, what type of hepatitis do you yeah. have? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, Chef, thank you so much for coming yeah, to be our guest. Eat this. Um, we're going to have a segment where Chef is going to show us how he's going to make the duck banh mi. Um, but thank you so much. And again, congratulations for everything you guys thank are you doing guys. Captain yeah, Lawrence. Guys, if you haven't been to Captain Lawrence, the beer is amazing. The food is now amazing. Transcendental. Get to Elmsford. Do you know the address off the top of your head? 444 Sawmill River Road. 444 Sawmill River Road, uh, Elmsford, New York. And come and show some love. Yeah. We're yeah. going to show the love too. There Chef, it is. Thank you. Right. I love it. I love it. Come on. Come on, brother. Bring it up. All right. <laughs> Old man, high five. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Uh, so um, we have a segment called Farm Life. Farm Life. And uh, Farm Life. Hey, farm hey. Life is. Yeah. What do you got, Mike? I what? heard a pig. Oh, what do you got there? That reminds me of Farm Life. Oh, pig. Live beach. at the barbecue from Pig, pig beach. beach and Interboro. What a you have room in like your a I better. Better. Okay. This Hudson Valley was wonderful. Yeah, it was though. so good. In, in honor of that, let's bring Phil Hogboy. Phil. Hey. hey. Come on, hey. Come on down. Hey. You're the next contestant on. Fence bar. Whew. What's up, dude? Fill that up. Fill it up. I was trying to tilt it. Oh, I fucked it, it up. This is great. Uh, I got to uh, hold off a little bit. I'll be back. I'll be back. Cheers. Cheers, hey, dude. Man. Welcome back to Farm Welcome Life. Back. Make sure you cheat for... over and take a look at that blue camera so yeah. you can see that. Uh, that, that Yay, face Phil. Yeah, that's looking flow. good, son. Dude, so thanks for coming back. Uh, you're actually the star of the show today because you supplied us with the duck. So yeah. thank you very much for that. That was very generous of you and all the people who had a, a hand the sexy at the chicken. Yeah. Sexy chicken. <laughs> um, but the, the reason we have Phil on is because in our busy Westchester lives yeah. uh, we tend to forget about the basics and the basics all start on the farm no farm no food no, no farm, farm no, no beer food. no oh, geez, that scares me no, no I gotta farm, go no away food. yes no farms, beer yes food yes far, yes yes farm yes, yes food beer. Yes. Yes, beer. yes farm yes beer, yes beer. Yes beer. I mean, um, and so this farm life segment is really to reconnect with what's going on on the farm, bring people back to the basics and talk about how people are getting their food and what's happening out yeah. there. So first of all, the duck that you brought today, was that the same duck that we were talking about picking up from the post office a couple of segments ago? Yeah, yeah, the duck indeed. Uh, the post office ducklings. Nice, dude. Stale day old babies. Day what, old. what kind of duck were they? Uh, they're called a Grimaud duck. So there are two different hybrids, or sorry, two lines of Pekin duck that are basically bred together to form an F1 hybrid duck that uh, has a great growth rate and an performance. F1? It sounds yeah. fast. Yeah. Sounds like F1. a Michael Schumacher would, yeah. uh, would ride one of these ducks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's a race car duck. <laughs> yeah. Race car duck. And so how long were the ducks actually on the farm uh, from post office to slaughterhouse? So the ducks go from either, you know, seven weeks on the farm to eight. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're, we're rotating our staff who are uh, farm apprentices. We have a couple here yeah, right. tonight, right? Yeah, so we have uh, Michael? Michael, who actually received the ducklings, give them water when they first came into the barn. Yep. And then uh, our next apprentice that rotated in after Michael, Issa, Issa, was involved in slaughter. So, you know, we're very comprehensive in uh, everybody's How involvement from you know birth to death. We want to make sure the ducks are cared for. The and ducks had a really good life, a good I life. assume. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think they had a pretty good life. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, they taste delicious. I was so going to say, <laughs> besides, the proof, the proof is, in the, is in the pudding. Yeah, I was going to say, besides tasting delicious, um, did the duck serve a larger, a larger purpose on the farm? Absolutely. So uh, our, our grounds on the preserve, they were actually um, a conventional breeding operation for uh, Simmental cattle uh, up until about 2016. And so 
we had to go ahead and analyze the different grounds on the farm for how that land had been used, mm. so whether it was grazed mm. uh, or hayed, and then take a soil sample, determine whether it was deficient in uh, different nutrients, and then apply the uh, proper poultry that would amend it through their manure. Cool. Wait, what do you mean? You put ducks? If it's like it needs something from ducks, or you put chickens, if it needs something from chickens, yeah. we need the yeah. It's yeah. amazing. So, so actually, each uh, form of um, uh, what was it called, poultry? Yeah, um, serves a different purpose on the farm, and the ducks are it's for great. the nutrients from duck poop, I assume. Yeah, yeah, and so so are the the chickens, but we, you know, the different species have different um, nutrient loads in their manure, so you can determine. You know, with chickens, it's more dry matter. It's higher in phosphorus. Yep. Ducks is lower in phosphorus. So if you're looking at a field that is deficient in phosphorus and you want to have an extended amount of time that you can run those ducks on it, you're going to have more span of time that you can run ducks mm. than chickens because the chickens are going to replenish that field with the phosphorus quicker. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So. You know, Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Wait, do I need chickens at my house? Is that going to help my yuck? My grass yeah. grill? Yeah, yeah, it'll fertilize your ground. You don't need to buy fertilizer. We yeah. talked about, yeah. uh, about a couple of hens chicken. at some point, but we're not ready we're not for there that. Yet. Yeah, ah, we're not, right, we're not right, there yet. We're not there yet. yet. Um, so basically, I mean, if you see ducks out and about, they're not just these cute quackers. They actually do serve a, a much larger purpose, especially on the farm, for yeah. getting the, the land ready for the next thing. That's yeah. great. Um, and, and I heard life. basically that uh, now that these ducks have gone to slaughter, that there is a surplus of duck and a surplus of chicken egg. Delicious. Delicious yeah. duck and yeah. real I chicken can, eggs. I can speak from, uh, yeah. we can all here at the Fence Bar, currently we've been eating this delicious duck. Yeah. It's like nothing I've, I don't yeah. duck I've ever yeah, tasted. Yeah, and you know, it's... There's a lot of work that goes into bringing the product from the field to the you know the store where you can buy it and then use it in your kitchen. And so, you know, yeah. I want to make sure the team, my guys like Sam and Jared, that like they're getting credit for their work to package it, right. and clean yeah. it, and make sure it's That's good great. and food safe. So, so if so. I if we have people out there that are watching, yeah. um, how do they get this stuff? What, should they should they Instagram you? Should they should they yeah. email the fence bar? Should we hook them up that yeah, way? Yeah, it's going yeah. down on if, the DM. If, if you're uh, if you're interested it's in great. fresh duck and fresh chicken eggs from Hog Voice Farm, please contact us. We'll get you in touch with the right people, but we could vouch for it. Oh, They're man. absolutely delicious. And thank you for Sam and Jared. Yeah. Michael and Issa, too. And, and Michael and Michael. Issa. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and thank Chase. You. Chase, who built the huts for the duck. Chase. Oh, Come Chase, on. we heard about the huts. Yay. We couldn't have done it. Without, we couldn't have had this delicious meal without all of you guys. So thank you so much. This is great. Dude, that's fantastic yeah, uh, segment. I heard there's cow on the uh, farm now, so yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully that's what we'll talk about uh, cow on in cow the next episode. Next time. No beef cattle. Ooh. Ready to talk about beef cattle right. next episode? Yeah. Thanks, man. Cheers. Cheers, dude. Cheers. Cheers. Here's the farm Cheers. life. Yeah. Cheers. Chef, now uh, we had duck that was brought over from Hog Boy from his farm in Westchester today. And naturally, we thought, what are we going to do with this duck? Let's make duck bon me. Bon me. And who better to make du duck bon me bon you. than the Asian and Thai Street. food yeah. expert? Bon so, me. Talk, bon me. <laughs> so talk to me about what um, what is bon me, first of all, and how is, is there any kind of um, specialty about bon me? How did it all start with the French bread? So uh, Vietnam was calling the China back in the days, and they were a colony of the French. Mm -hmm. French and the uh, China. Okay. They um, they bring a lot of like. You know, in any kind of like of those situations, it's a lot of like cross uh, contamination and yeah, call yeah. of culture and food it's merging. It's yeah, it's a merging. It's like exactly. a melting pot of two different kind and, of cultures, uh, sure. like the fence bar. So we had the French come over to Vietnam, basically. Correct. Okay. Yep. And, and they brought their bread with them. They bring their bread with them. Like what's like a little bit of different like changes to the bread. Like they do it over there with rice flour. It's a little bit less crusty, crispy. Uh, more soft and a little bit sweeter and they bring like then like the Vietnamese just put like the amazing thing they do like on it you know like it's they usually put, chopped like, pork yeah they put like eggs. chopped pork they put like normally they put also like pate on it oh. that is also like a hmm. chopped like pork pate Ooh. that comes from did we do that today 
We don't. We have the duck, man. We have the duck. So what was that sauce that you put on first? That is a special... The special sauce. Oh, 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 I tell you. That is a special aioli that, uh, <laughs> that I made at Captain Lawrence. Fantastic. Thank and you. what else goes in the... In yeah, the what bottom? are the greens that you've already assembled Bunch of herbs. here? Yep. That is like one of the main things on, on the food, on yep. the on the Vietnamese cilantro. food. It's like cilantro, Thai basil or holy basil. Holy mint, basil. Uh, Rao ram that is a uh, Vietnamese mint, mm -hmm. and then pickled vegetables is the other thing like daikon, carrots, cucumber, and um, Thai chilies. Mm -hmm. Little spice. So yeah, little I like spice. the spice. And uh, I don't think I'm they're more... Italian in uh, Thailand. <laughs> yep, <laughs> Thailand, Italian, hey. same thing. Oh, so the other thing is a uh, kaffir uh, nice. lime leaf. Yep. That is like an amazing, like it's gonna give like an amazing flavor, especially for the dog and the smell. Nice. Yep. Like it's gonna bring everything so together. So a ton of freshness, a ton of acidity, um, everything that really it's kind of yeah. uh, tries to go. to go together Super with the vibrant. duck. And the yeah. duck is so me, like fatty and, and strong. So and it's gonna help to, to cut, cut it. it. Yeah. That is the thing about like Southeast Asian food. It's like the amazing thing. It's like they found a way to how to balance it out, the whole thing, the yeah. whole spectrum. They balance it out very good, and that that is what make it like for me like one of like the place to go when oh, I want to so eat. Good. You know, Vietnam, Vietnam, Thai, yeah. like uh, Cambodia, Laos, like have all you that. Area, have you, you spent know? time in uh, Southeast Asia? Yes, I spent like some time. Well. Was one of my my bucket list, and I thankful to do it. Like after I sold my restaurant in Brooklyn, I just took over there like some time. Well, that's awesome. I did so, the same thing. I left uh, corporate America and I went to Bangkok and Chiang Mai and Koh Samui and Koh Tao. Got, got, got gone, baby. Got gone. It's a great place to get gone. The best people in the world. <laughs> That's awesome. So we're going to put a little bit more of this together and uh, oh, yeah. we're going to eat it really soon. So tune back in, see what the final product looks like, and you can maybe even watch some of us eating it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh. And I think that's going to be my favorite part. I, that's going to be my favorite part is you not watching me, it's going to be me eating it. Why don't we just keep filming them, him making it? <laughs> and if you don't look at this, it's like, more, more. Look at it. it's like a, it's like a subway it. party platter, but Get it's it not. It's the Bon Mi Fence Bar colors. smoked duck for five so hours party platter. Pl platter green orange oh, white. i don't want to leave because oh, i know man. generally a fence bar we don't get to eat happen, right? yeah. so we each no... get like one of those this is mine this no, is no, just for me no, yeah. no, no 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 i'll rock paper scissors with you right <laughs> okay you go on shoot or says shoot uh we rock, go on paper, we go on three shoot. okay rock paper, paper scissors, scissors says, says shoot, shoot. Ah! It's all yours. Damn, it's man. All, all right, this you, one's mine man. then. Okay, you got the other one. <laughs> <laughs> and so we got some pickled cucumber going on here. Correct. Yeah. Is it anything? Is uh, it a flash, uh, flash pickle cucumber? Oh, that this. is a uh, cold pickle. So oh, we we do it. Um, cold pickle. Yeah, we do it like the liquid um, is cold temperature, so it doesn't get still have to bite the crisp. Okay. Fun fact. Neighbors on hate. But these are not the. Uh, these are not a dill pickle. This isn't a vinegar. No, 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 no. This is not a vinegar. Okay. This is like rice vinegar, yeah. palm sugar. It's it's lightly, but okay. it, it's, I'm okay with banh mi All pickles. Right. All right. But that's about it. <laughs> oh, can we that's get a close up on the duck? Oh, look at that. We gotta get a close up on the duck, Matt. Oh, you guys are missing Matt. the best part. Matt, You're cutting the duck. The duck. Oh, look at that. dude. Look at that. I'm gonna put belly. some of that smoky, crispy skin. I want all that skin. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the good part. Oh, oh he's yeah. playing. I'm so psyched because it's my sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I want it. I want it. I want it all in my belly. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at how's that. that uh, how's that cooked, that duck? Is it good? It's been on the smoker since about <laughs> 2 o'clock. It's beautiful, bro. So okay. five, five hours? It's like juicy. Yeah. The skin, like you can, Look at the skin. You can hear that. Did you hear that? Yeah. I hope oh, you can wow. hear that. Yeah. That you crisp. cannot hear it, trust me. It's, it's You'll get good. that boom mic from their house, neighbor John. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do we have an audio in? And, and this, <laughs> this <laughs> duck. Yeah, exactly, this, right? this duck was, uh, oh, was, was raised and um, well taken care of at a local farm in Westchester. Um, one there of our really of good neighbors and friends, uh, Phil Hogboy Haynes was able to supply oh, it. He's yes. such a good neighbor, but uh, this duck was this duck was really well looked after. Yep. 
and um, it's gonna be delicious. And that's and, it's and, and that is and that is already like three quarter of the of the game already done. Like right. if like your product is good, totally, you don't need a guy like me. So uh, yeah, yeah, we, we do. Always need a guy. I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, because you guys like me. That's that's it. it, man. I don't care if you can cook, man. Just come hang out. Right. But it's pretty awesome that you can cook. And would you please? Yeah, yeah please. Give to me. Oh my goodness. Oh uh, my god. So that's it. This is the baby. All right, that's that's it. Mike. Wow, Mike. How are you gonna so eat that all? I know. Right. I'll tell you what, neighbor. Oh, yeah. I'll share it with you. I'll start at one end. We get. Yeah. I'll start. Want to be in the middle? We'll be in the middle. Love it. And yeah. maybe we'll make out. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. Fence bar after dark. Fence bar after dark. It's on okay, Cinemax. Uh, Cinemax I Five. I don't want to oh. give it to you guys. <laughs> oh, you're gonna have. Go to. ahead. All right, neighbor. All right. All right. Howdy, neighbor. Hi. Oh, look at these clowns. Who's got a picture of this? Let's see. You got video. Reaper. Go oh, for thank it. you. Boom. They're good. This is how you do it. Boom. <laughs> That's no good. Step on drinks, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That's really good. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh no. It's falling, more. it's falling through. Let's cut it up. All right, it's time for Ooh. Beer Report! Beer Report! Now, Beer, beer, beer Report beer. at Fence Bar started off by having all the neighbors come over and no, everybody it started would... off with a sidecar, actually. No, that's oh. a good place to start. I like so where your head's at I like right that, there. Mike. Suburban beverage. Mm. Uh, Perennial. I don't even know what that is. Perennial's a great brewery. It's, I think, the first time that they've canned this particular uh, beer. It's well, previously only available in a 750 milliliter bottle. Now brought to you in a 60 ounce can for your traveling convenience. Cheers. Your neighbor. Your Thank neighbor. you, neighbor. Um, and so we had all the neighbors over and everybody would basically talk about what they're doing this weekend and what they're doing uh, next month. And so Beer Report is really an opportunity for us to share a few events that are happening yep. locally so that you can get out and get involved and maybe even come out and meet Hang out with the Fence Bar crew. So what do we got going on, Sean? Well, first thing, we got Sloop, one of our one of our fan favorites, our yep. episode five sponsors. They are doing all month long uh, Friday releases at their Elizaville location of different versions of the Sloop Juice Bomb. Juice Bomb. Oh. Juice Bomb. Oh. Juice Bomb's the Fence Wait. Bar favorite. Juice Speaking of bomb. Sloop Bombs. Juice Bomb. You're my Juice Bomb. Do we have like a Sloop skate or is that Hudson Valley? That's Hudson Valley. Oh, but so geez. basically if you want to do that, check out an Elizaville, check out Sloop's website. They're not open yet at their new site in East Fishkill. But until then, man, Elizaville is a wonderful place to go. Opening soon, very yeah, close to uh, the neighbors. Now, there's also something that is uh, is sort of special to to, to me and uh, also to a lot of other people. There's a fundraiser being done at One Mile House that the uh, Fence Bar is going to help out with on Sunday, uh, August 13th, and it's for a really good cause. Uh, 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 one of the uh, one of the one of the people that worked at the at the bar and, and a lot of her friends. Um, well, she she had a zip line accident and broke her, her her spine, and so this is to raise money for two of her friends to ride from New York City down to Florida to raise more money for its spinal awareness and to help her out. So People, this is what Fence Bar is all about. It's all about helping your neighbors. So totally. please, please, please August make sure. 19th. August 19th, One Mile House in New York Sunday. City. Sunday. It's going to be during the day. I'm going to be there. We're going to be emceeing it. We're going to have our mobile fence bar to go there. Comedians, music, and Barrier Brewing Company um, is making a special beer specifically for this fundraiser. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so make sure that you guys go ahead and circle August 19th on your, uh, on your calendar. And speaking of special beers, is there uh, oh. something happening at... The River, River Outpost. Outpost. I don't know what you're talking about, but I will say, uh, in uh, this is in September 13th, which is a Thursday. Yep. Funny enough, we're going to be doing the Thirsty Games at the uh, at the River Outpost. Not the Hunger Games, people. The, the Thirsty, Thirsty Games. games. We're uh, parched. Uh, we're and very parched. We're always parched, and we're basically going to. The Thirst Games are going to be comprised of three short games. We're going to have a sign up, so you could sign up with a partner. Yep. Uh, there's going to be a small entrance fee. That's going to be. You get a t-shirt, yep. you're going to get some. You're gonna get your own sidecar glass, yep. and you're going to kick in some shekels for the fence bar so we can keep uh, affording to buy the beer and pay for the lights and, yeah. uh, and all of the duck. And so many people have asked us how they could support and how they could contribute. Everybody contributes enough. 
But if you really want to contribute to Fence Bar, go on FenceBar.com, buy a T-shirt. Please, we have it on the right on the website. Yep. It says, here, hit this button. A lot of people wanted to help out and support us, and we want you to. Uh, and the best way that you can do that is to wear Fence Bar wherever you go and pay for it. Well, that's episode 10 for you. If you thought we sucked, come back next week. If you thought we were great, we're come still going to suck week. next week. We might suck more, too. We it's might possible. suck more. It's possible. Well, this is great. Uh, neighbor, I, I love you. Episode 10, buddy. Can, can you Woo! believe it? We did, episode 10! We did it! Yay! We made it to two digits! <laughs> Yay! All right, bye, neighbors! Clap, 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 clap. Clap, clap. Don't be a Michael and fucking recycle. <laughs> that was oh very, very God, fast. Aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> Bye for the business. Later, neighbor. Later, neighbor. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. All right. All right, now we can fence bomb.